So 3.6, we do what are called nonlinear models. And you don't necessarily need to know everything about them, but this one, this one is an exponential because it's e to the x. This one is exponential dk because it's e to the negative x. So remember we're back in 3.1, the graphs, we did the e to the x and we did, or like we did 2 to the x and 2 to the negative x and they go in the opposite directions like that. This one's called the Gaussian model. Uh, this one is a logistic model. And with those two, <clears throat> basically look at the equation. And we did a, we did a couple um, in a previous lecture again, but you would just solve for a different variable. You don't need to know what they are. And then the last two are the natural log and the common log. So remember this is um, log, the natural log is base E and the common log is base 10. And pretty similar looking graphs follow the vertical asymptote, which is the y-axis. They both hit like a 1, 0 and keep going, but um, then these these both have shifts of 1 upward, so that's why they look slightly different. Here. So we're going to take this information and we're going to put it into the graphing calculator. So Go over to your graphing calculator and get ready to enter stuff in the lists. So I'm just going to clean up my calculator, clear that out. So um, when we do this, we want to go in and hit stat and say enter number one. And we're going to put stuff in list one and list two. Um, so when you turn your calculator on, make sure you have list one and list two. If you don't, let's say for instance, notice now I'm missing a list three. I can highlight where I want. So I would want list three to be here. And so what I'm gonna do is go second, insert, and then I can call it second three. So notice above the three, it has the L3 and I'll put L3 here. You don't manually type it in, you hit second three and it will put it back in. If you have numbers, so back here, let's say I have some numbers, eight and three, and I wanna clear a list, so if you have numbers in list one and two, go up and hit the clear button. Don't hit delete, hit clear, and then you, when you come back down, it'll clear out your list. So we're gonna go ahead and enter the year in list one and List two will be the population in millions. Now, they're using eight as 2008. That's how they want us to do it. So we're going to go eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and 13. 12 and 13. Now in list two, we're typing in the populations. And this is already in millions. So even though I type in 300. 4.1, that's in millions, and then 306.8, 309.3, be really careful because if you mess up even the smallest, uh, so 311.6, like you mess up the, even the decimal, it can throw your numbers off from what I'm going to get as we're doing this, and we want to be as exact as possible, and then 316. And then you want to make sure that these numbers are across from each other, that you don't have one more in the other one or one less. So the first thing they're going to do then, um, using T8 to correspond to 2008, we're supposed to make a scatter plot. So if I make a scatter plot, we want to go into our calculator again, and we're going to go to Window. Now my X's went from 8 to 13. So I'm just going to go 0 to 15. So I want to be a little bit smaller, a little bit bigger. And then I can put maybe tick marks every 5. That The scale does not matter. 
Um, if I go 0 to 316, that's the largest number, so I could go to maybe like 320. Let's see how that looks, 320. And here, maybe you're going to go by 20s. So I'm just matching the window to be a little bigger, smaller than my X's and Y's. Now, to get the stat plot on, you can go to Y equals, and you can actually go up and hit enter. That turns it on. You hit enter again, it turns it off. Or you can hit second Y equals and go into number one here and say we want to hit enter so it's on. This is the scatter plot. The reason why I wanted list one and two is by default, X goes in list one, Y goes in list two. Uh, you can pick your symbol, and on my calculator, I can pick the color. But because I've already done all this graphing, or the uh, window is good, and I've turned on the plots, now when I hit graph, there's my graph. So because I have such a large window, we can't really see what stuff is. So it might be helpful to maybe do a, a 6 to 15 by ones on the window. And then these only go from 300 to 316, so maybe I'll go 300 to 320, you know, maybe by like, oh, to 320, and maybe I'll do a tick mark every two now instead. Oops, 320. So now when I hit graph, I kind of see something like this. So. Um, that's the scatter plot. So what type of data seems to fit that? Well, right now, right now, what data fits it? I'm going to say probably a linear. So now we're going to do... Um, Use your calculator to do a stat, calculate a regression equation, and we'll put it in Y1 to see what we can do. So let's go to the calculator, and I want to make sure one thing is turned on. So we need to do uh, a diagnostic on, it's called. This will help us when we do our, our regression. So we're going to go second, zero. Um, notice that the calculator is in alpha mode, and so you can either start arrowing down or hit, right there's the letter D. So we hit this button, and it takes us quickly to the Ds in our catalog. So second zero takes you to the catalog, hit the X and negative one button, and now you scroll down a couple more, and you see this diagnostic on. Hit enter hit enter again and it will tell you that it's done. So this time I'm ready to go ahead and find my regression and that what I just did with the diagnostic on will help us put in our value or what's called the correlation coefficient. So now we go second stat oops sorry uh, sorry about that so we go after we've entered our list in the stats forever scatter plot we can go stat and slide over to calculate and we're just going to go down you can do number four or eight they're both linear regressions but I'm just going to do number four do you want to do a linear regression with list one list two now depending on what calculator you have um, you may have different buttons to push but my calculator this is what it's doing do you want to use list one yes list two yes so I'm just going to go down everything's good um, now I'm just going to say enter on calculate. If you saw that little flash beforehand, it came up as linear regression, list one, two, that's when you can hit enter on other calculators. So write this stuff down. I'm going to write it down and then it will be sitting behind. So give me a second. So I've written it down. You can see it was AX plus B form and they told me A was about 2.38, you don't have to write down all the decimals, and B was 285.22, and it's important to keep track. The R, the R is 
anything close to one is a really good uh, correlation coefficient, strong relationship between your line and the data. So 0.999 is, you know, almost perfect. So now they want us to do this into Y1. Um, so you can just type in what you have here is good enough. There is a way to go ahead and just paste it all in there, but we're just gonna, since we wrote it down, we'll just write it in by hand. So now go to y equals, and you can type in 2.38x plus, sorry, x, 2.38x, oh, 2.38x plus 285.22. And so when I graph this, the line goes through almost every box perfectly. So we have a real strong correlation, and that's a good graph. So example two, just some basic points. So you're going to go stat and edit, put in all the x's in list one, all the y's in list two, then come back and we'll make the scatter plot. So hit pause. I'm going to enter all the stuff in and then we'll come back. So you can see I've entered all the stuff. If I highlight the bottom number, I have 16 entries in our data point. So then we go to window. Um, our numbers on the X go from 2 to 9.5. So I'm just going to go 0 to 12, maybe by 2s. Again, the scale doesn't matter. And then the y values go from 1 to 10. So I should be able to go 0 to 12, even on that one, by the 2s. Now remember, my stat plot is on. So we go in here, and I look. It's on, and I have list 1 and 2 and all that. I can also go into y equals. I can see that it's on. So as long as that's on, we're ready to go, and I, I can hit graph. Now, this has an upward curve, so definitely the linear will not be fitting it as well. So let's go ahead and take a look. What they're going to want us to do is go ahead and write down the coefficient of determination or correlation coefficient, r value, r squared in this case, they're asking us to do the R squared, R squared value. You don't always have an R squared in all of the problems, so sometimes the R helps you compare them. But um, So they want you to do an exponential, a power, a linear, and a logarithmic. So I'm going to go through these. So you're going to go stat and calculate. So we've already done a linear. That's oh, You would do probably number four, the linear. And then they want an exponential. So the exponential would be zero right there. They want you to do a power model, which is this one, power. And then we have to be really careful. A lot of people think that the LOG is the logarithm, but LO, the logarithm, that's logistics, the logistic model that's on the first page. We want the LN regression. So what I'm going to have you do is type all those in, um, write down the equation that you get for each one, do the R squared value, and then let's compare which one will be the best. So write them all down, then come back and look. So pause your video now. So after doing all that work, here will be your equations. Um, clearly the logarithm, the logarithm equation, remember, bends up and to the right. And our, our graph, we want something that's more this direction. And then the linear is only 0.88 this time. So we can kind of get rid of these two because the R squareds are not closest to one. 
Now this is a 0.93, which is not bad, so that's a pretty good power model, but look at this one. This one's 0.99. So this is the best model. So we're gonna, I'm going to go ahead and type that in um, and show you what it looks like on the graph. So you can see that I've typed in that regression. I actually did the uh, paste feature to get it, and I deleted a bunch of the decimals. You don't have to write down all of the decimals. The point is, when I hit graph, that particular regression model almost hits every, every box again. So that's why it has a strong correlation coefficient or coefficient of determination. So the only thing you would do at the end of this problem is probably go ahead and circle the one that's the best Right? You want to identify which one's the best so that everybody knows you know what's, how to do that. So on this last example, you're going to go ahead and find a regression that works. Basically on the test, we'll ask you kind of do the same. We'll tell you what equations we want you to look at so we can see if you know how to do all the different ones. But you're going to put this into list one. So this will be kind of your, this will be kind of your X and this will be your Y, put this stuff into list one, put this stuff into list two, like we've been doing. Then I want you to do a linear regression, the logarithm or LN regression, do the exponential regression, and do the power model. So write down the equation and write down your R squared once you get all this done. And then let's take a look at what it looks like. So remember, if you hit this stat button and you go into edit, I have numbers in there, so go up, hit clear, come back down, go over to this list, go up, hit clear, come back down, and now you can enter your numbers in list one and list two. So after I did all the uh, stat and I entered everything, these are pretty small Y values, so I used a window from 0 to 1 by 0.1. So that would be a good window. And when we graph, we can see this decreasing. So maybe it's an exponential decay graph. I don't know, but we want you to do the linear, logarithmic, or LN regression, exponential, and power. So do those now. Pause the video. So if you do the linear, you have something kind of like an intercept of 0.401 and a slope of negative 0.0146x, r squared 0.99129. The logarithmic, or ln, would look like this. 0.98, which is not as good as that one. So I'm going to put a little check mark by that one. We're not, we're not using that one. Uh, exponential would be this equation. 0.999, so now I, I know we're not using that one. And this is only a 0.94. So the best, the best one, circle it, is the exponential. So now it says, use your model to estimate the amount remaining after 17.5 years. So what we're going to do is put 17.5 into our equation. It goes in for the x. So on the calculator... So I, I wrote the equation down, and we're going to put all of our numbers in, and then I don't need all the decimals. We're going to put 17.5 here. For the x. So we can go back to our calculator and say, uh, we can just clear that out. So I can do 0.42779 times... 0.94611 and I'm going to raise that to the 17.5 power and it says there's about 0 0.1 well 0 0.1 I already forgot 6223 we'll call it 623 grams left
that is what is called an extrapolation because 17.5 is not in our table. We're predicting. So extrapolation means you're predicting outside of the data points with your given data. All right, so example four, to estimate the uh, amount of defoliation caused by the gypsy moth during a given year, Forster counts the number of egg masses on 1 40th of an acre in the fall, the percent of defoliation by next spring is shown. So we're gonna put this in list one, put this in list two, use the regression feature, and this time you're using the logistic model logistic log it's like scroll through and find the logistic model enter the equation into y and see how well does the model represent the data so you're going to come up with that equation do that now and then pause the video and come back and look so i've entered in my stat you know i went in stat edit did all that and we want the logistic model so Stat, slide over to calculate, choose that. I have to hit enter a couple times here. Some calculators right there is what you do. Um, now notice it's not giving us the R value, so there's no correlation coefficient, but um, this is not an easy graph to put into the Y equals. So I'm gonna go to window and my window should go from like I'm going to say negative, negative 5 just because that one number is 0 up to 105 and let's just do 10s and then the numbers go from 12 to 99 so 0 to maybe also like a 105 and you can do 10s. Oops. This needs to be 105. And by 10. So that's kind of what the graph looks like. So what I had said is um, we do stat, calculate the logistic. It's a difficult one to type in. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to y equals. And if I want to just paste it in there, I can go y equals. Hit this bars button, this variables button. And we're going to say number five. <clears throat> we want a statistics. So we're going to go to number five. And now we slide over to the equation. And we're going to paste in our e equation. So it takes care of everything. Um, because it's really hard to type in. And now if I graph it, look at this little curve down here, and then now it's going up and through. So obviously, this is what the equation looks like. And yeah, it's very well, fits it very well. 